The aim of this video is to show how I'm retouching these covers. The workflow is different for everything that I do. Um, but in general, you can see up here we've got the select mode which lets you add to, so I can essentially select regions that I want to manage opposed to the whole document. And in this instance, we're going to use Site for D-Screen. Look at the difference that it's made there. These are glossy covers that Apple have uh, printed it. You can see 134 lines um, an inch, which is really nice resolution. So very happy that we've got uh, a 600 DPI scan of this. I've done this particular page on an Epson Perfection V700 uh, with carefulness, uh, well, diligence applied rather to the settings that you can turn off. Let's see if I can bring that up. Color management, you turn off continuous auto exposure. You can scan to 1200 dpi t4 you want, but even just the basic exposure that your uh, scanner is um, saving can be modified on the fly. Now, these pages are cream in sort of real life, so I'm aiming to sort of turn off any auto exposure just so I can keep that creaminess of this background. It's not a white page. Um, this also means that if you're scanning segments of a document, say that's bigger than the scanner platter, you can stitch them together and there won't be all different brightness settings. So what we're dealing with on this is the hole punch area and I'm also going to de-screen that Apple logo and we'll probably take out the paper texture on this. And we're going to fix up this text a little bit, just looking a bit faint. And overall, the contrast is very low. So I'm going to select everything and just fix up my levels. This is probably the number one thing you've got to do. Even if you weren't de-screening, you'd want to adjust your levels. Then I go back and I just look at the original. And I say to myself, mm, no, it's a bit lighter than that. How this appears to me is going to be a little different to your screen, but you can see already the difference that's made. Now that's almost it, uh, except for the fact that I would like some consistency. So we're going to do a dropper and get a 31 by 31 pixel average. I'm just going to click in the center and that gets me my cream. You can see the different colors that it'll bring out, but I'm going to get a beigey cream. And I'm going to essentially mask off these areas. And assuming that I've got my keyboard shortcuts correct, no, I didn't. Whoops, I need to go right click, select inverse swap my palette and then I can with you didn't see that but that was a keyboard shortcut that just fills in the rest of the areas uh, with that single color so that's awesome because it instantly cleans up um, the page if one was to zoom in you can see that we've kept our texture here but for compression and uh, brightness even you know, even tone across the page from left to right top to bottom there's no gutter shadows, it's all the same cream. So this is a wonderful example of uh, a five minute retouch making a huge difference to um, just the overall polish of something. Um, other documents can be very tricky to work with uh, as far as um, objects, you know, on rotating, uh, rather objects that are rotated, objects that are um, problematic uh, because they've got uh, text that bleeds into other areas. So this is just so straightforward to manage. Um, now, we can then go to our paint bucket tool and just click in this area. Whoops. I need to go back to my settings and change foreground to that. Turn my tolerance down and just click in there. And you can see that that homogenizes the paper texture around. Let's go back. Now, I 
no, I did make a mistake there. So we go to our hist oh, I can't screen record history, or I can. Yep. So we need to uh, undo that. Where's my history? Yep. Okay. So what I meant to show you there, I beg your pardon, was just homogenizing the paper texture for this area we need to set a bounding box so if I paint fill if I paint bucket this texture here to match this cream that I picked off the dropper average it's going to apply it to the whole page and I just want to confine it to that bit there great now you can see how we've got a really clean Apple logo it's vibrant it's not sh um, suffering any de-screening issues. We can see that um, I've left a little bit of a border around this graphic, but that's at quite a, a big enlargement. At, at a standard view, even at 25%, it, it's quite clean. Um, and we've got some artistic integrity there in the sense that I haven't used um, dust and scratches to reduce out the screening. I've used a, an AI-based site for program. Uh, rather plug in. So I'm going to save that. And then for my uh, PDF file, I'm going to give a hand over a JPEG. Now these were 600 DPI scans, so I'll do 50% and it's just a cover, so we do 90, and that takes us down to 1.8 megs. That's absolutely perfect. Our color profile is mapped, and we just press export. So in this particular example, it would be 01, uh, rather, this is the second cover, chapter cover. And there we have... A nice, still high resolution JPEG there. And if I go back to the original, I can go to my history and show you the difference. So five minutes to go from that to that.